I'm going to start off the uh, augmentation talks uh, talking about the uh, pedicle approach. I'm an orthopedic uh, fellowship trained spine surgeon, so the pedicle is uh, an integral part of the anatomy that we use to fixate the spine. And many of the steps that are in this uh, talk are uh, replicated for instrumentation. So we're going to be looking at a common thoroughfare or pathway into the vertebral body. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm going to ask to please have the next slide forwarded because I don't see the um, this behind me. Oh, thank you. And let's see if that works. And it does. So the anatomy, the critical anatomy uh, in the spine is three-dimensional anatomy. And learning early how to read three-dimensional anatomy is very important. Uh, and this, come on, darling. Uh, the pointer. No, it wants to advance. All right, well, uh, the three dimensional anatomy that is critically important is the understanding that the narrow region of the pedicle is the waist, the middle of the pedicle. So this wire, seen in all these three views, represents uh, the visual anatomy you see on the AP lateral. And the visual anatomy essentially is, an, is owl eyes. So you have two eyes and a nose. And that anatomy is more easily seen than any other part of the anatomy in the osteoporotic. So any patient with severe osteoporosis or metastatic disease, you rely on this anatomy for orienting. And the key and essential um, important principle is to have the target of your work be perfectly visualized in the AP lateral planes so that your three-dimensional mind can know exactly where you are going. So for us, when you're placing a jam sheety, when you get a chance, uh, could I get a pointer, um, a jam sheety? You're placing at the merger of the transverse process and the pedicle. This ah, this the mechanical portion. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and so as you come from outside in, uh, you know that the T process anchors at the base of the pedicle. So the transverse process anchors at the base of the pedicle, and there's a saddle there. Uh, when you dock at that point, you know from your imaging that the pedicle is about 18 to 22 millimeters long. So the pedicle is about 18 to 22 millimeters long. And in some folks, congenital shortening of the pedicle, it'll be shorter, in others it'll be longer. But as you go from outside in, if you dock at the saddle and you mark at the skin, 22 millimeters on your jam sheety, you can actually do the entire procedure with the AP. Initially, you should not. Initially, you should do AP lateral, AP lateral. But, but many of the surgeons, as they get older, they dock, they mark on the uh, jam sheety 20, 22 millimeters. And as that jam sheety approaches the skin, the needle should approach the medial board of the pedicle. Now, you know from three-dimensional anatomy that the medial border of the pedicle is the most narrow part of the pedicle, but it's narrow at the waist. So the pedicle looks very much like a woman in a girdle. It flares above and below. It's narrowest at the waist. So when you are at this point, the tip of the needle will be in front of the canal. And that three-dimensional anatomy assures that you do not enter the canal. So it assures your safety. As the needle reaches the skin, the mark on the needle reaches the skin, the tip of the needle reaches underneath the medial board of the pedicle, you know you will be in the vertebral body, not in the pedicle. Or as we dictate it, that when coursing from lateral to medial, the jam sheety reaches the medial border of the pedicle simultaneous with reaching the posterior longitudinal ligament level on the lateral. Because the posterior longitudinal ligament goes right down here. And when you're in front of it, you're safe. And you're ultimately targeted for the center of the vertebral body. 
where you want to be in the anterior third center of the vertebral body. Because this anatomy is consistent and rarely involved with fracture, but the anterior vertebral body is inconsistent and constantly involved with fracture, the reliable morphology is the posterior column and the posterior spinous process. The way to set that up is to have a lateral in place coming in from the side with the bow of the C-arm over the patient's head, the patient position prone on a transparent uh, fluoroscopic table of your choice. It's always good to have this table modifiable so you don't have to move your x-ray. X-ray is set up orthogonal and the patient is rotated. And when you're uh, working in patients who have uh, osteoporosis and scoliosis, it's really important to make sure that each vertebral body that you're working on is in the center of the field and anatomically oriented. So you have to rotate the table to do that. And that'll maximize your safety because it makes your reproducible, consistent three-dimensional anatomy at each level constant. So as you see a patient position here, the area of interest should be in the dead center of the field so that you're not getting parallax issues uh, outside. And depending upon the thickness, the size of the patient, the amount of obesity or lack of obesity, uh, your trajectory will allow you to dock at that junction of the transverse process in the pedicle, and you'll be going from outside to inside. And these are examples uh, of them, and uh, apologies for uh, they are much darker on the screen than they are on the computer. Uh, but uh, what this shows is uh, the ability to be uh, a bilateral uh, with balloons at uh, the anterior third uh, for reduction of the fracture. The ability to alter trajectory is really important. You alter trajectory, but you still maintain that three-dimensional understanding of where the needle will go, because there'll be times when it's a superior end plate fracture, and there'll be times when it's a superior and inferior end plate fracture, and you're dealing with vertebra plana. So if it's a superior end plate fracture, your docking is high to low, so that you get down in the body underneath the fracture and can support it upward. When it's vertebra plana and you're collapsed above and from below, you have to uh, align so that your uh, trajectory goes in between. And that's a much, there's much less margin for error. But you can get the cement to be contiguous across the front, which is what gives the important support. So when you're troubleshooting, if you know that three-dimensional anatomy and you see the owl eyes, you, you can ask yourself on your lateral, when I reach the medial board of the pedicle, where am I on the AP? Where am I on the lateral? And if you're at the medial board of the pedicle, you know you're aiming to go into the canal because you should be at the medial board of the pedicle when your guide wire is at the posterior longitudinal ligament level. So in this case, as you enter, you're coming in to uh, too, too diagonally, and you need to be more vertical. And it's a very simple thing to back up, reorient into a uh, more vertical position, and advance, recheck, and uh, see that you're at this position instead of this position. And similarly, when you are too vertical in your uh, orientation, uh, you'll end up too lateral. And so you're, here you're at the medial board of the pedicle, but you're way into the vertebral body. So your augmentation is more likely to result in a leak of cement and your balloon go external to the vertebral body because now you're sitting in the fracture bone on the lateral cortical wall, whereas you would ideally want to be in the center. So this three-dimensional anatomy reproduced at each level for each procedure is the critical essential step if you're going to use the pedicular approach. The pedicles have to be in their anatomic position so that you don't get confused or disoriented. And when you don't have much in the way of bone stock to see, or if you are uh, operating on a patient who's severely osteoporotic and obese, 
uh, your visualization diminishes. You want to have your anatomical uh, orientation perfect every time. So in this circumstance, uh, you can approach a problem unipedicularly. So if you can get things ideal, you can do the entire procedure from one side. Uh, for those of you who are, who are well oriented to your anatomy, you'll notice that this isn't the perfect owl's eye orientation. Uh, the nose of the owl is actually closer to this pedicle than it is to this one. And when that occurs and your spinous process is oriented over toward you as the surgeon, the pedicle on the opposite side also medializes. So although you could say to yourself, well, we're going to get the balloon to go from the medial bar of the pedicle on this bone to the medial bar of the pedicle on this side, if you actually orient the x-ray properly, you find out, no, you don't. Uh, uh, this is, though, very good placement of the balloon, very good placement of the cement, because when the balloon inflates, you will get cement to completely cover the uh, end plate above and the end plate below, and it will strengthen the bone remarkably. The surgeons who do fusion operations always aim to put the spacer in a disc space so that it goes from the rim to the, uh, on one side to the rim on the other side because that's where the strongest bone remains. And when you're augmenting a fracture, you want to do the same thing. You want to support the intersection. So if you can get your cement to go from the medial border of the pedicle on one side all the way to the other side, that vertebral body is remarkably well augmented because now you have rim support and you have central support. So what the particular anatomy allows you to do is to keep a three-dimensional view of the level that you're operating on. It allows you to avoid complications associated with malalignment. And it also allows you to, when circumstances occur, do the entire procedure from a single side. 